Even though I have done this trip so many times, I am just afraid of doing it again. I am subject to nightmares that start all over again. So all my feelings are not to want to do it. I'm not young anymore. I'm 80 years old. And my greatest fear is that even when I come back home, I'm going to start suffering from the same nightmares over and over again. I think that you have to confront pain to be able to heal it. I come back to Maidanek, to this camp, to convey the truth of what actually happened. Unless you have somebody that can say, I was here, I saw this, this was done to me, I don't think people would accept it as the gospel truth. When we were pushed into those wagons to take us to the east, we didn't know where we were going. All I remember, screaming, the crying of children, and people were dying from suffocating. My father found a space for us that we were reasonably safe. And he kind of almost like surrounded us with his hands. I always imagined that this, these were wings of an angel because he kept us together. My mother, my twin sister and I, we were like one. And I don't remember how long we drove. And when we arrived at this place here, they were sorting men from women, women with children, children on their own, women alone. And I lost the sight of my sister Sabina, but I was watching my mother all the time. But suddenly she must have noticed my mother too. So she separated herself from the, women, from the children and she ran towards my mother. And as she was running, I was watching that beautiful golden braid that she had. She came to my mother and she hugged her. So I was watching her back and I was watching again that golden braid of Sabina. And that was the last time that I saw my sister Sabina and my parents. But not only that, I lost the sight of her. I cannot remember anything about her except that golden braid. Suddenly, they started chasing us and I found myself at this door and there was this vet full of what I thought was water. A couple was standing there and he told me to jump in. I jumped into it and then I 
didn't completely immerse myself, so he hit me over the head, and then I jumped out, and suddenly all my orifices were burning because it was full of disinfectant, and I was, I was like on fire. And then when I came out, I noticed these showers, and I said to myself, now I'm going to die, because in the Warsaw Ghetto, we knew that the Germans, the Nazis, tried to fool us that we were going to have showers, but gas came out of these showers and not water. So I decided immediately to say my prayers because I knew I was going to die. So I started saying my prayers. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem Kibot Malkuto Lolam Vaed Yahafta Adonai Lecha Cholabofcha Vkonafshech Vkomodecha Vahu Yadvarim Eile Ashanuchi Metzafka Lababecha Vashinantem Lebanecha Vadbarta Bom Vashivtuchu Vbezecha Vlachtuchu Baderech Vashofu Vkumecha Kshartem Lot Al Yadecha Vahu Letatavot Enenecha but water came out of these showers. As soon as I got dressed in the prison clothes that was given to me, we were chased out and I started looking for my father. And I looked all over and I couldn't find him. Suddenly I saw a man who I knew in Warsaw. I ran up to him and I said, please, did you see my father? Where is my father? He looked at me, he didn't answer. But suddenly he lifted up his eyes to heaven and I knew that my father, my mother, my sister Sabina were all murdered in this horrible, terrible gas chamber where thousands of Jews and other victims were murdered by the Nazis. And now I am standing here and looking at this place in such dread because I find it so difficult to imagine the manner in which they died, choked to death, innocent, wonderful human beings. This place, this camp, was a place of torture. At any second, at any minute, any couple, any person who was in power over you could make it so that you would be sent to the guest chambers. So you lived in, you, so what you did is you isolated yourself in a kind of suspended animation that you didn't think that you were actually here because you hid yourself. You tried to make yourself invisible. You were not there to be seen so that you should be able to be sent to the guest chamber and murdered. I found in the middle of one of these display cases, I found a pair of shoes that I thought that reminded me of my sister's shoes, but they weren't, they weren't. They were just my 
fertile imagination that wanted so badly to find something to remind me, something to kind of, I could touch, something that I could feel that belonged to her. But I couldn't and I didn't. And it was quite unrealistic for me even to try. But you always, uh, human emotions cannot be explained. Human emotions are so deeply rooted that what, what you want, you can't always achieve. And I've never been able to find it. And to this day, I cannot visualize anything. My, the memory of my sister has completely disappeared from childhood. We were twins. We were one body born together. In my, uh, we were together in my mother's womb. And yet, everything that happened to her, right from the age of, of, of our little, as, as babies, until the age of 11, when we arrived here, everything except the braid, that blonde, beautiful braid, I can see. So whenever I think of my sister called Sabina, I see a braid, everything else has gone. When I arrive in Majdanek and I stand in front of the crematorium, I shudder inside and fear takes over my whole body. I can't walk inside it. I can't look at this place where not only my family were burned to death, but many tens of thousands were burned there for no reason. And when I look at today, and I see the way bombs fall on cities in Syria or in other places and where flames spout, it immediately conjures up in my mind the crematorium where I've lost everything because if I didn't lose it in Majdanek, I lost it in crematorium in Auschwitz where some of my family died or in Chelmno where some of my family died or in Treblinka where they were burnt in ditches. So these flames that I see today sprouting from the bombs that are falling on innocent people evoke all these emotions in me, all these fears, and I find it's impossible for me to go in. But I think it's important that when you visit, you should be able to go inside and maybe by coming here, decide that it is time to stop this fighting, to stop this murder, and to stop the world's turmoil. This is the mausoleum where the ashes of the murdered victims of Majdanek are reposing. Amongst these ashes are my parents and my sister. And I come here to sing a song which I dedicated to Sabina. Dort nicht weit, dort wiederum stark Platz, dort Stein, dort wie man stippt sich in der Brei, in die Waggonen, dort wie ein Kind schreit zu der Mama, oi Mama, lass mich nicht allein, ich will gehen mit dir zusammen. Schweig, Kindle, schweig, Herzle, zug nicht euch, als du bist To say farewell to my Danek would be impossible. My Danek is part of me. My family is here. My father, my mother, my sister Sabina, they are here and I will always be here. My Danek lives in me. Hello, Mishra. Yeah. 
I'm always hopeful for the future, that things will improve. I don't know if it'll be in my lifetime, but maybe in yours, hopefully.